bunch of us men deep down inside feel like a fraud because we've been training our whole lives and never actually put to test what you've been learning. I was thinking the other day, it's like a soldier who's, who's done special forces his whole life and he's trained his whole entire life and then he never goes to battle. Like eventually, eventually you start questioning like, do I really have what it takes? You're like all talk and no real walk. It's kind of like that Detroit self-defense video guy. I, don't, I hope you guys have seen this because if you have, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I think he like trains with Steven Seagal and you guys, you can Google it, right? You can YouTube it. It's this guy who's got all these techniques for like disarming somebody or taking them down or how to like kill somebody with, uh, your pinky, just all these like crazy different things. And here's the thing. If you watch that guy, you realize right away, if you've ever been in any kind of fight, any kind of fight, if you've ever handled a gun before, you could realize really quickly that guy has no, that guy's never been punched in the face a day in his life. That guy's never had, he must've grown up without brothers or something because his techniques suck. And when you look at him, you're like, oh, there's a poser. That guy's a poser, 100%. He's all talk. Like he literally has these training videos. These are not spoof videos. These are literally like this guy thinks that he's legit. He thinks that he has it. But he only thinks that because he's never actually tried it. In some of his videos, you'll see him use his technique. Like people will challenge him. And so one of them I saw was like this, this kid who had an airsoft pistol. And so the Detroit self-defense guy was like, all right, ready, go. And he tried to disarm him. And instead he got shot three times, <laughs> in like 10 seconds. And you just see like right away. Okay. This guy thinks, I mean, deep down inside, listen, that guy goes home, he turns off his lights at night. He lays in bed and probably feels really freaking lonely because uh, he knows that everyone else knows that he's got the false stuff. He doesn't have the real stuff. And, and that's like us, right? Like, it's not your fault. If you, if you didn't get, get given good skills, good tools, it's not your fault. It was supposed to be your parents' res responsibility to do that. But now it's your responsibility, right? And you can't pretend like you are something if, if you're not in the game. What do I mean by that? It's like, of course you, of course you feel like a poser if your marriage sucks and you go to church every Sunday and pretend like your marriage is awesome. Now, is it your fault that your marriage sucks? If you never got marriage tools, if you never got trained, if you, if you didn't grow up in a good home where your parents had a good marriage, and maybe it's not your fault, but it's definitely your responsibility. So at some point it becomes your fault, right? And same thing with your, with your kids. Like at some point you feel like a poser. You feel like, man, I, I don't know how to lead my kids. I don't know how to connect with them. I don't, and you just feel like a fraud at some point. <laughs> and I'm saying, Hey, there's a way out of this. The question that we answer is, where did you get your skill set from? Now, if you're driving down the road, I want to answer that like out loud. Where did you get your marriage skills from? Where'd you get them? Where'd you acquire those? Where did you get your communication skills? Where did you get your leadership skills? Where did you get your finance skills? These are all mountains that we climb, right? These are all things that, that, if you, if you didn't train for this stuff, there's probably a good chance that you feel like marriage, you feel like those mountains are breaking you down and you don't have what it takes. That's what you feel like. 